Hello. Hello there, everyone. How are you all doing today? As you can see, I've got a bit of a weird setup going on. I have my main camera right here, and that is because I've been rejigging the setup. There you go. So we can check out this brand new handheld console here called the Miu Mini Plus, which is a really, really cool little thing that can do loads of different uh, game systems. And it's it's kind of weird that I can't actually see what I'm doing on stream. Hopefully this, this stream goes okay. Hopefully you can see everything. I've got, I think I've got the setup and the lights and everything working okay. So yeah, this is the Miu Mini. Miu Mini Plus, here we go. Here's the box that it comes in. Obviously I'll be doing a proper unboxing on YouTube, but just so you can see instructions, power cable. There's a screen protector in there as well, which I haven't, I haven't actually put on there yet. I haven't taken it anywhere. So we've got this. I've also got a few other handheld systems to compare it against. We have the Ambernic RG351P, which I did a video about a few years ago. And I've also got the analog pocket here as well. And a Game Boy Advance, so we can do a few comparisons, but let's move these out of the way. And I'm also going to try and see if we can come up with a way of getting some of the games off the other systems like this. And do a bit of a comparison about how they all play. But if we zoom back in a bit. There we go. Hopefully you can see that okay. I've turned the screen brightness down as far as it will go, or almost. Maybe that's a bit better actually. It gets really bright, look at that. That's almost blinding. Even even in real life, that's like way too bright. I don't know who would want it on 10. So let's let's leave it on 2. I think 2 is good. There's also a load of different options in here, which I'll be covering in the main video. There's also a bunch of themes, including... <laughs> I was a bit surprised and confused to see this one. There's a Pornhub theme. But I won't be... I won't be showing that one off on stream. I haven't installed Onion. What do you mean by, by that? That was one of the things that I wanted to do on this stream, actually, was try and install some custom firmware. Hey, 8-Bit Boy, thanks for joining. Video games time! Yay! Well, a bit of a different stream today. We will be playing some games, but I want to figure out what this is all about and how we can actually use it. So, I was under the impression that this was Onion, because these here say Onion on them. But is this not Onion? I did have a lot of issues with it. I did have a lot of issues with it yesterday. Yeah, see, it says Onion up there, but I don't know whether this is actually Onion or whether this is like some weird Miu version of it. So let me know whether you know this, if this is the actual one or not. Anyway, let's take a look at the games that we've got on here. So we've got Arcade and inside there, this, this is all the stuff that comes pre-installed on there. So there's a bunch of different categories. I don't know why Neo Geo is in here, if it's got its own category a bit later on. And then you also have a whole list of games, and you can use the back triggers to flick through them. And the back triggers are really nice, actually. There's two on either side, and they're actually raised up slightly, which is really cool. So there's a bunch of different games in there. Should we try one out? Let's try a game. Let's try Snow Brothers. I love Snow Brothers. Okay, that is not the Snow Brothers I was expecting. What the hell is this? Uh, I don't think this is official. I mean, it plays the same, except the snow is a football. What the <laughs> what the hell is this? Does anyone know if this is a official arcade game? I've never seen Snow Brothers like this before, and I am a big fan of this style of game as well. So this this is pretty funny. We did it, and we got some weird football chant at the end. Oh yeah, can you all hear the sound from the console as well? Because obviously I haven't really got a way of plugging this in to get the sound out of it. So I might need to move the microphone down a little bit, maybe. How's it sound? Can you hear the game at all? Is this even a real game? Or am I being lied to? Anyway, so... That's what the game plays like anyway. And then the interesting thing that I found when I was having a look through this yesterday, each emulator kind of has this native menu, but it's full of a bunch of stuff that doesn't have anything to do with the handheld. And a whole load of these options don't seem to do anything at all, which is really kind of confusing. 
So I'm not sure why they kept all these options on here. I guess it's just like leftovers from the PC version of the emulator. Um, anyway, let's quit out of that and let's try another game. It's really weird. When I booted this up yesterday, a lot of the games just didn't play properly at all. If we have a look at Sonic. <clears throat> if we uh, restart, is there a way to restart? Restart. There we go. Let's try Sonic from the beginning. Well, I was having loads of weird issues with screen tearing yesterday. But... Seems like it's fixed itself overnight, though. It seems fine today. I was about to try and do a spin jump. A spin dash. There's no such thing. Yeah, it seems really nice. There was a weird thing as well yesterday, if we go into the on-screen overlays. So you can see that's like clear pixels. And then you've also got a bunch of different overlays which give you like scan lines and stuff. Which is pretty cool if you like that sort of thing, although a lot of them don't really seem to be made for the system. So you have some weird issues like the uh, the Game Boy ones especially bad, which I'll cover in a little bit. But yeah, as I'm planning to do an actual full video review unboxing and stuff, um, on this in the future. Is there anything that you would like me to cover in that video in particular? Is there anything you'd like to know more about on the system? Um, can we shove a tiny CRT into one of those things? Uh, it might be a little bit heavy, maybe. Slightly heavy. But I don't really know where to start. There's so much to go through. And then there's a bunch of other stuff as well so although you've got all the games here you've also got this retro arch one here which also has a bunch of the same games but a few emulators that are doubled up like for some reason there's two different gba ones and uh, no as far as i know it only goes up to ps1 i think ps1 was on there i mean it goes up to pokemon mini obviously that is the most demanding console on here not sure what oh pc engine wonder swan links MSX. It can do some DOS stuff, which sounds interesting. And yeah, it does do PS1, but I guess it wasn't on that list. It's here. And there was a bunch of PS1 games pre-installed too. Um, I was trying out Need for Speed 3 yesterday, and I was really impressed with how that played. <coughs> But no, nothing higher than PS1, unfortunately. It's quite a low-power device, but I guess that's good for battery life. I mean, we'll see. I haven't really let the battery run dry yet. But I'll show you what Need for Speed looks like, because I was really impressed with that. Let's skip that intro. I did notice things flicker a little bit when they shouldn't normally, which is a bit strange. But it looks really nice though, like look at the quality of the screen. It's really clear. I love this this uh, Need for Speed game, by the way. What car should we do? Yes! This one's for you, editor. Let's have medium traffic. <clears throat> Here we go. Bedrock Ridge. One of my favourite racing games. Wrong car. It's the only option they had. <clears throat> oh, if I can find the accelerator, that would be a good start. There we go. <clears throat> I always think it's so cool to see... I mean, it's not that impressive today, but I always think it's so cool seeing something in 3D on a little handheld like this. Ah, okay, wow, the uh, handling really isn't good on this, in this car, at least. I really love the handling system on this game, though. I think it's probably the best feeling racing game of its generation, Need for Speed 3. 
and it plays and runs really well on this too, which is great. I wasn't really expecting it to be so smooth. Ah, out of the way. Oh no, I slowed right down then. It kind of gives me cruising vibes actually, now you mention the cruising games. It's a shame it can't play N64 because that would have been really cool. Although there's obviously no analog sticks, so I don't really think most of the N64 games would have actually controlled that well anyway. But this this is just a fantastic game. Definitely in like my top 10 racing games. I wonder what the PC version is like actually, because I know it came out on PC as well. I was considering doing a video about the Need for Speed series at one point, but there's just so many games for it. And honestly, like, more than, let's say, a third of them probably aren't worth playing. Ah, the control. The handling is very stiff in this car. Ah, I can't tell where the course was going then. I've got a few other PS1 games on the Andernick as well, which I'll try and copy over to this in a bit, and we can check out some of the stuff that didn't come pre-installed. Just in case they... Ah! Oh dear. How do I reverse? There we go. Just in case they filmed this with games that they knew performed well on the system, I'll throw a few things at it that aren't pre-installed on there. Just to check it out. And I'm also really excited to try out the... Um, Pico 8 games on here too. I think this would be the, the perfect system for playing Pico 8 games on. And actually, I just thought, well, we've got the camera here. Yes, it does work. I can kind of cheat and actually record some gameplay at the same time. You game on the MiU all night. Awesome. Maybe you can... Oh, I was pressing the wrong button. Maybe you can give me some tips as to how to improve the system and stuff. Once I've done... Oh, we're still only on lap one. Once I've finished this lap, we can try out a different game. I keep forgetting there's a handbrake as well. That would help. Where am I supposed to go? Not that way. Why would there be a road that goes to a dead end? Why well, I'm doing badly. I'm doing so bad. Ah, whoa, okay. I'm going fast enough just to make him completely flip over. And he was driving directly towards me. There we go. I'll show you something that I wasn't very keen on. And Squiggly Monster 67, you might be able to help me with this. If we look at the original Game Boy, if we play one of these games, you either get this horribly stretched image it might not look too bad on the camera, but in real life you can see there's like lines going across the screen. You can kind of see them there. If we get into a game. Can you make it out? Mm, not really. Maybe if I do... Do that maybe? Yeah, you can kind of make it out there. Let's put that back on zero. But there was a few other things as well. So I thought, yeah, I don't really like it being squashed. Um, but there's literally no, there's no integer scaling options. There's either 1.5, which puts a weird Game Boy border around it. And then you've got some weird screen tearing that wasn't in the original. Um... And you can turn the scaling off, but it still looks blurry. Like it's not it's not properly integer scaled. So I was a bit disappointed with how Game Boy looks on it. There's no real way to get it clear. Is there a way of seeing what operating system I've got? Because I was under the impression that this came with Onion pre-installed, but maybe it's not the right one. And I've got to change that back. I'm still getting used to where all the buttons are on this new camera. Went over 80, has that stopped it? Yeah, that stopped the flicker. It's got a weird screen refresh rate. Like if I put if I put it on 60, you probably can't tell very well, but you can kind of see it flickering a bit. On 50 it's kind of worse as well. 
So for some reason, this has a one over eightieth of a uh, refresh rate, which is really strange. Um, yeah, there's probably somewhere in here, maybe device info. Mm, no, hardware test. No. Don't know. Do you know how to find out what I've got on there? I thought it'd be in device info. I know there's a few other options, like on on this one, I put a different operating system on it. But it's, I haven't used this in a while now. Let's see if it's actually got any power. No, it's dead. It's dead. It's completely dead. I'll charge it up while we're while we're doing this stream. There we go. Let's leave that on charge. Let's check out some of the consoles. What else have we got? Game Boy Advance. Pokemon Emerald didn't seem to work at all. If you can see that. There is something on the screen. It's kind of hard to make it out. It's like a weird outline. But the game doesn't boot. But Ruby did when I was playing around yesterday. So just to show you. I think it might be a bad ROM maybe. Because this one seems to work fine. With a really weird grid over the screen. Can you see that? I don't know why they put these filters on by default. They don't look that good. But you, you can turn them off if you go in here. This one has the same options menu as the other one, unlike the uh, Game Boy version. So you just have to go in here and turn off screen overlay. And then it looks kind of okay, although it's still a bit blurry. But it's not... It's not sharp like you would hope it is, but it's good enough. I'd still be really happy with it, especially you can't really get a sense of size, but it is a really tiny little handheld, which is really cool. It's, yeah, about the same size as the GBA SP when it's folded shut to give you a sense of scale. So you can't really complain about the screen being a little bit blurry because it doesn't really make too much difference. Normally shows on boot up. Let's see. Oh, I had some really weird thing when I... Is it turning off? Is it not turning off? Did I put it in sleep? Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's a really weird screen as well where the text doesn't quite fit. Like the, uh, the question marks coming off the end of the thing for some reason. Anyway, let's turn it back on. See if it tells us what version of the operating system we're on. Uh, does anyone else really hate this as well? Why don't consoles have power switches anymore? Why do you have to hold it down? I don't like it. I just want to be able to switch it on and off. There you go. MiU Linux games. And then wait a while. No, it didn't say anything. Unfortunately. Maybe if I put the SD card in the computer, it might. I've kind of got an extra camera set up, if we go on this one. So we can put stuff on the computer and actually see what's on there. I can't get it to turn off again now. Shut down. I'll try putting some of the other games on as well, because I was just transferring a bunch of stuff off the uh, RG351. Oh, something else really funny. You've got to see this if we go on full screen. Look at the micro SD card that it came with. This was hilarious. Will it focus? <laughs> Have you ever seen a more fake SD card in your life? It literally just says 64. I thought that was so funny. Anyway, let's put that in here. I don't trust this card one bit. There we go. Can you see that? It's probably really small. But let's see what we've got on here. Maybe I can zoom in a bit. There. There we go. Let's do that too.
So this is what's on the card. They are known to fail on cards that come with the system. Oh dear, maybe I should get a new one then. So let's see, whereabouts on here is the firmware? I have no idea where I'm looking. These are the different emulators, I'm guessing. And images to go along with them. More images. It's probably something in one of these. Our uh, app, what is that? Here's some more emulators of the Pokemon Mini one. That might be why there was two different options on the start screen, because there's this set of emulators. And there's also this set of emulators. No idea where they're split out in two, which is a bit strange. And then there's another retro retro arc. Is it retro arc or is it retro arch? Do you guys know which one it is? I've always been a bit confused by that, because there's also one here. I'm not sure what the difference between them two is. This is where you dump all the ROMs. So if we go into downloads, I did actually back up the Ambernic earlier because I wanted to try. Try and put these on here. So we've got Theme Park World, Tetris Plus, Klonoa and Gran Turismo. Let's see if there's enough space on there. So it should just be a case of just pasting them in here, right? That might take a little bit. It'll overwrite stuff on the card when it hits full capacity. Testing yours with a fresh onion install. Are there other operating systems too? Um, what's it called? Miu Mini. Do you know if the Miu Mini and the Miu Mini Plus run the same? Let's see what Reddit has to say when we're waiting for that to copy. I was wondering if the Onion OS install is the same on the Plus. I went through Onion OS on GitHub and it doesn't mention that it works with the Plus. I just have to adjust myself. Look at me advertising my own brand. I found my old Retro Break t-shirt. Ten days ago. Maybe we're out of luck for now then. Ask the developers or aiming for it. Yeah, maybe not just yet. It looks like it looks like they know. So it says wait there. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. Doesn't work with the plus just yet. Wait for an official release. On Retro Game Corps, he installed the dev build. Go to releases page on GitHub and grab the development build. V four point one alpha. Dev said four point one is out very soon. It's not 4.1 is out soon. It's not going to be compatible with the Plus. 4.2 beta by the end of the month will be the first Plus-focused release. So they're saying it's not compatible, but he's saying that he's already installed it. And no one's actually linking to the GitHub. Okay, we'll figure this out. Let's see if there's actually any mention of it. For me, Mini. Let's see, releases. Is there any mention of the plus on there? Hmm... No. I mean, there is a mention of a plus, but not in relation to the actual console. Maybe I'll have to hold out for a bit then, unfortunately. Uh, minimal UI. So I wonder what version it is running then. It didn't say, did it? What is copying over? Oh, right. Apparently Gran Turismo was already on there. Let's skip them then. Okay. There was something else I wanted to do while we're here, so... I wanted to find out if there's something wrong with this version of Pokemon Emerald. 
Well, it seems fine on the PC emulator. So it's really strange that that didn't boot up. Anyway, what I really wanted to do was make a new folder on here. Because, although it's nice that they've got all these games pre-installed, I don't know if you've noticed, but if we zoom in, they all have completely random numbers assigned to them. They're not in any particular order. Like, it starts with Pokemon, then it goes on to Golden Sun. So I was trying to find some games yesterday, and it was just a mess trying to go through that list. So I did, I did also back up my GBA. I did not back up my GBA EverDrive. It's empty. I was planning to back up my GBA EverDrive. Okay. One thing at a time. Let's take that out. We'll come back to this in a minute. Let's go back on the main screen. Let's put that horrible fake micro SD card. I might pop on Amazon in a bit and order a good one. I don't trust that at all. Let's turn it back on and let's try out some of those PS1 games that I just put on there. Yeah, that's something else that I want to do as well with the saves because I've got... It won't come off, but I've got the GB operator there and on the analog pocket I've been playing this game here called Yggdra Union. I don't know how you pronounce it, something like that. I wanted to transfer my save off this and try and put it on here so I can carry on playing on this and see what the difference is. But first, let's go into the PS1. Let's see if any of those games that we added are actually on here. So... I don't see it. Maybe was I putting it in the right place? There should be Theme Park World and Tetris. Hmm. What about if I go in this way? Where is the PS1? Oh, there it is. PSX. Weird, no, it's going back to the same menu. Anyone got any idea what I did wrong? It should be there, right? There is a file explorer as well, so we can have a look in here. It is there. Is it not the right file type? No, that did nothing. Hmm. Okay, we're missing, we're missing something. Not sure what. So let's put that back into the computer. I hate not having a power button. I really hate that. Does that bother anyone else? Let's put it back in the computer and see what's different about those files then, because that did not work at all. And it keeps saying there's a problem with the drive already, so that's a bit worrying. But it is here. It shows up fine. Let's compare it to something we know does work. Where's Need for Speed? Was it one of these ones? It is a different file type. That's PBP file. And Tetris Plus. There's a whole bunch of files in there. That one's a different file type again. Anyone got any idea how to get these working? Let's see what uh, theme park was. That's how I'd expect it to be, bin and queue, but for whatever reason it couldn't see it at all. That's different. That's a CCD type. Crash Bandicoot 2. Crash Bash has been, and I used that yesterday. And that seemed to work fine, so I'm not sure what's going on there. 
Hmm. But it couldn't see it at all, which is really strange. Oh yeah, sorry, you're still seeing that. There we go. Let's zoom in a bit. Oh, zooming in on Windows is annoying. Why does it change halfway through? There. So, theme park world. Ah, I just zoomed out again anyway. There's no easy way to just zoom everything the same. There you go. So we've got a bin and a queue file for theme park world. And it's not showing up on the system. Crash Bash, I played yesterday on it and that worked fine. And there we have a bin file. Is it because it doesn't have a JPEG to go along with it? Need for speeds there. That's a different file type again. That's a BPB file. PPP file. And Tetris Plus had like a hundred different bin files in there for some reason. But I know this one works on the uh, Anbernic because I played it on there recently. So any idea? I really have no idea what's going on here. Sub, CCD, again, different file type. But yeah, those folders weren't even shown up at all. I'll try and find another download, see if I can get a different file type. Tetris Plus, PS1. But I guess you don't call them ROMs, call them ISOs. And yes, I do have the games, so it is legal. I'll just try downloading it again, see what sort of file it gives me. And... You know, I can't work out what was different. CCD, is that what's missing? Have they all got CCD files? Yeah, they do. Something called a clone CD image. Whereas this one doesn't. Could be the issue. Hmm, let's see. 45 seconds and we can try Tetris Plus. See what's going on with that one. Has anyone experienced this before? Uh, Squiggly Monster, have you put any PS1 games on yours? Right, 25 seconds then we can try it out. And then... And then I'll try taking the files off the EverDrive and we can check that out on there. I know this is a pretty scrappy stream, but I wanted to just test out everything I can with the device. So. Okay, should be downloaded. Or not quite. Almost. Almost. Opening when complete. It should be complete now. There it is. Let's extract that and see what happens. No, it's the same as what I had before. It's just giving out a million different bin and Q files. Do I need to put the zip file on there? I didn't see any others with the zip, so... That one's got a weird folder called a Pico drive. Whatever that is. Maybe I'll have to give up on PS1 for now. Because that just gave me the same stuff as before. Let's eject that. And we can try putting in some EverDrive stuff. I don't want to copy everything because it'll take forever. So let's just try... GBA games, GBA homebrew and tech demos, let's copy them. 
I wish I had two different um, SD card readers readers on the PC. Okay, that might take a while. So while it's doing that, let's play around with something else on here. Let's see if those games magically appeared. They might. They might do. They might not do. I don't like how long it takes to turn on. That's definitely a downside compared to this. Just instant. Okay, let's try. Let's go back to PS1. Nothing's there at all. And there's obviously no instructions for how to put any of this stuff on here. Let's try it a different console while we're waiting. Let's try it at the SNES. What should we play on the SNES? Let's play some Mega Man. My favourite Mega Man X game. Possibly. Let's play some X2. Ready for some awesome music. It's very tinny coming from this. Right, yep. Kind of looks okay, although again the aspect ratio is a little bit stretched. I presume there'll be some options in the native menu. Right, we've got the same set of options. Um, although I don't really see any options for, like, video. So I'm not really sure how you can change the aspect ratio and stuff like that. If you can at all. I'm not sure. Override? No. On-screen overlay. I think that's literally just... It doesn't seem to do anything. There's so many options here, it's kind of overwhelming. The CRT. There's a Super Famicom one, let's see if that does anything. Didn't seem to do anything. Uh, do I need to change that? Okay. Hopefully you can all see the screen okay. Let's... Oh, whoa, okay. We have a weird SNES board there. That's not what I was expecting. Wait, what's the point of that if it cuts the game off? The sides of the screen's cut off. I thought it would, you know, fit the game in the border. That doesn't make any sense. I can't see my health. It's off the side of the screen. Why? Yeah, why? Why would you choose to have the border on if you can't see everything? Let's see. Auto scale overlay. Okay. Wait, that didn't make any difference. What? Am I being stupid? What's... What am I doing wrong? Auto scale overlay, it didn't do anything. But that's not changing the actual screen, that's just changing the border. Auto scale overlay on or off. Doesn't make any sense. What? I don't understand, what is this? Why? I think maybe that's to do with the OS not being updated or something. That doesn't seem to do anything. Auto scale overlay. It just cuts the side of the screen off. Um, I mean, yeah, it looks okay without it, but it's not that sharp. I was hoping there would be some sort of video options in here, but there's nothing really. Well, there's nothing at all. Emulation hacks. 
reduce slowdown. That could be interesting. Hmm. Anyway, let's actually try playing it, see how it feels to play. Ignoring the ignoring the options. You know what, one thing I have to say is very good if we zoom out a little bit. The buttons and the D-pad feel really nice. I know they're a little bit small, but it doesn't really feel cramped or anything. It actually feels really good to play. Ow. It'd feel even better to play if I wasn't contorted like that, having the camera next to me. Ah, oh my god. I am good at Mega Man, I promise. Let's finish this intro stage. How good is this music? Can you hear the music? I hope so. Then we'll go to the volcano level, that's my favourite. Gonna face this giant robot first, look how cool that is. He takes up the whole screen. Couldn't do this on the NES. Well, I guess you could. It would all just be on a black background. Yay. But yeah, it's kind of weird that a lot of the settings don't really seem to be applicable. I have never read this text, ever. I always just want to get straight to the game. Well, you know what, if we're going to be playing this, I may as well copy over the rest of the... Uh, copy over the rest of the Everdrive stuff too. In the meantime. Then, if there's enough space on the card, we can just put everything on there. I might actually hop on eBay in a bit and order a new card. There we go, Volcano Zone. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. I just want you to listen to the music more than anything. Listen to this awesome tune. The speaker's not great though, really. Alright? Listen, she just threw something in the bin. Well, yeah. Awesome song on this level. Maybe in top five Mega Man soundtracks. Oh no, I missed the one up. Ah! I'm dead. There we go. Great demo of Mega Man 2 there. Mega Man X2, should I say. Oh, 11 minutes that's going to take. That's not too bad. Let's check out another system. Let's see how NES games run on it. And I don't know what's going on here. Super Contra 5? Does that game even exist? Hey, there's a load of Mega Man games. Mega Man 7? For the NES? I don't believe that exists either. Hey, there's Snow Bros again. <clears throat> yeah, let's play Bubble Bubble. Okay, start doesn't work on this one. It just changes from FC to ROM slash FC. What? Why? Why is that even an option? Taito. Bubble Bubble Part 2. Wow, the NES games look really nice. That's really clear, actually. 
There is a slight scanline filter on it, but I don't really mind for this. That looks really nice. Fine. Oh man, I love this game so much. I only had the Game Boy one as a kid, and I always wanted part two on the NES, but it's so expensive. I've never actually seen it in colour, it looks really nice too. Such an improvement over the first Bubble Bubble for the NES. Ah. You can tell Taito really knew how to program for the system by now. By this point. Apart from the sound effects cutting the music out, that's a bit annoying. But still, it looks great. Oh, I almost got killed by that guy then. You know what, I have to say that NES games actually look and play the best out of anything on here so far. This looks really nice. Yeah, you can see it a little bit clearer. It is quite bright, and I think this was this was as low as this screen could go. Hmm, that's something else that's kind of annoying. There's no way of adjusting the brightness without actually quitting the game completely. I guess there's save state, so it's not too bad. But you need you do need to go all the way out into the main menu. Come out of all that. Go across into settings. Turn that down. Go all the way back. I guess go to recent. And then play it from there. Oh wow, it did jump straight back into the game though. That was good. There you go. You can see it a little bit clearer now. Are you going to come up here? No. I'll go that way then. Oh no! Oh, I landed on his head. All the bubbles are getting stuck in the top. Can we get that gem? No! There we go. Let's try another NES game. While we wait two more minutes, and then we'll have a bunch of GBA games on there. That's cool. You can set favourite games as well if you want a specific list of stuff. Let's see what else I've got on here. Castlevania. Can't go wrong with Castlevania. Definitely one of my favourite games on the NES. Oh, weird. Even though it said Castlevania, it's the Japanese version. Well, yeah, it looks and plays great. No slowdown or anything. I'll be really happy with this. You know what? I'm going to try in a bit as well. I'll try copying over one of the save files from a GBA game um, through the GB operator. See whether we can get that up and running on here. I love Castlevania 1 so much. There's just something about it that's so timeless. I know some people don't like the way the controls are kind of um, stiff, I guess. The jumping's quite stiff. But I really love it. It's one of them games that, I, that I've that i just memorised off by heart. But yeah, it looks, looks great on here. I wonder if there are any of those um, screen overlay options. Oh, apparently it's turned on. It's just really low. Let's put it on one. Okay. Kind of difficult to see on camera, but that's put a CRT sort of... Scanline filter over it, which looks pretty cool up close. Well, you can see it's kind of cut in the writing out in the corners. Looks really good though. Get a wall check in. Let's see what else there is. There's a whole load of preset different filters and stuff like 
Let's see what FC Miu is. Is that Famicom? Okay, I don't understand these ones. Why do these filters not change the aspect ratio? Now you're just cutting stuff off the corner of the screen. And this is an official one as well. It says Miu on it. It says Miu on the side right there. Yes, it doesn't fit the game. I don't understand where they're coming from with these. Auto scale overlay. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't work. Maybe it's just a bug in the operating system, but it doesn't seem to do anything at all. Let's try. Okay, that's a pretty cool CRT one. You can actually kind of see the edge of the screen in the corner. And I don't really mind things being cut off a little bit like that, because that's kind of how things were back then. But it's pretty strange. Oh, this one does have a video option. Let's try Pixel Perfect. Didn't do anything. 4x3? Didn't do anything. Yeah, I think it's broken. Didn't seem to be making any difference at all. Color palette? Whoa, there's a lot of different color palette options. NTSC filter. But yeah, that's that's weird. Maybe it's because I've got that overlay on. Let's turn that off and then try them. No overlay. Okay. So now there's nothing interfering with it at all. Let's try going back into video. Set that to 4 by 3 Do I need to... Wait. Set it or apply it or something? It's not doing anything. Is it because that's on? No. Let's see if the colour palettes work then. No difference. Anyone? Am I doing anything wrong? This just doesn't seem to be working at all. Let's try one of these. I think that made a difference. Slightly. Yeah, that's cool. So that, that put on the... Yeah, you can't really see, but around the red there, it's a bit fuzzy. Well, I don't see any of the aspect ratio stuff or anything. All the colour palette options didn't make any difference either. Weird. Maybe it's a bug with the uh, operating system that's pre-installed, but it doesn't seem to be making any difference. Sound quality. Low. Why is low the first option? Why would you not want it very high? Oh, okay, that's why. Let's go somewhere safe. Hmm, listen to that. That's not good. It's very scratchy. How is that high sound quality? That's worse than the other one. What other options have we got? Turbo controllers. Zapper crosshair. Okay, interesting. No sprite limit. Overclock. System region. Or Game Genie support. That's cool. So, seems like there's a lot of features, but half of them don't seem to do anything yet. Which is a bit disappointing. Right, let's turn this off. Let's try and put the um, EverDrive stuff on here. Try out some GBA things. And then the next thing that we can try and do after this is try and copy over a save file. Actually, I'll try and put it in there now. We can probably add the save file into this while this is copying. So, uh, ROMs, GBA, uh, GBA EverDrive. Hopefully, there's enough space to drag all this on. No, I was over by two gig. Okay. But you know what else I hate about Windows? You can't see the size of the folders. There's a size option, but it doesn't tell you anything. You have to go in properties. It's so stupid. That's only 300 meg anyway. Where is... Actually, we don't need them ones. And I don't know what Dragon is either. That's 
some weird leftover that can go. I think that's from something else. Delete them. Let's just try putting these things in there. Still over. God damn it. Okay, let's try these three. Where's all the space coming from? Let's be... Oh, I wanted to put everything on there. What's a good homebrew for the GBA? Open Lara, that'll be a cool example. Oh, why are there so many options? Let's put that in there as well, because that's a game I'm looking forward to. And then for GBA games, let's just put... Just to test it, F0. Sonic. Advance Wars. I only want to test it out anyway. And let's put a few of these prototypes in there as well. And the Voxel version of Banjo Pilot. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. And while all that's going on, let's try. Oh, no, I forgot this doesn't work half the time. So the GB operator program is just awful. I know I gave it a good review in my video, but over time it's just become so bad can't even find it but whenever I click on it it says it's it's already running multiple instances detected even though there aren't multiple instances there's only one I just got rid of it and it still says it's running and as soon as I close it it's just going to disappear off the list Let's try ending up there as well. No, no good. I guess we can't use it today. Stupid program. All right, then. So we're not going to be trying the uh, save files today. I'll have to try and get that working some other time. But let's see whether the folders actually work. So I put a bunch of stuff on here. Let's have a look. Game Boy Advance. This is all the junk that's pre-installed. Oh my god, there's so much. Don't tell me that you can't use folders. Please. No! After all that, you can't use folders. How are you supposed to sort anything? Let's try going through the file explorer. Ah, uh, this is not going well, is it? This is not going well. ROMs, GBA. GBA Everdrive. Execute. Error. ROMs, GBA. GBA Everdrive, Advance Wars, Execute, Error, great, doesn't do anything, I have one more try, I can try going in here maybe, um, uh, maybe not, 
Oh, maybe this is where you set the settings for all the games on here. There you go. Maybe you actually set the settings in here instead. But you can't... Can you choose something to run from here? Game Boy Advance. How do I run it? That's just telling me about it. Directory? No, that's just all the stuff that it needs, I guess. So you can't actually choose a game or a core from inside there. What's the point of having that as a separate thing then? Okay. Let's try this way. Retro arc, arc or arch. GBA. And then it takes me back to the same menu with no folders. Uh, so I can't play any of that stuff either. Let's try it this way. Maybe I'll be able to see it. Search. Banjo. No, that's not the one I put on there. Oh, God damn it! Okay, folders are non-existent on this then. Let's go back onto the PC side. Hey, it looks like the operator's finally popped up. We can try that at least. If it works. So, if you go on data, you can download save. And then you can choose where to put the save file. So if we put the SD card back in here and figure out where the save files are located, then we can try booting that game up. Um... Where would save files be? On here somewhere? No? Are they in their own saves folder? Well, because I haven't made any yet. No. Maybe because I haven't made any, it hasn't made a folder for him. MGBA, no. Nope. Maybe you have to change the settings in here to get the views to come up properly. Oh, I might have found it, maybe. There's a save section there. Possibly. Let's try that. Put that in here. It's not the same file type though. But worth a try, I guess. Let's move them out. That's so annoying that you can't have any folders. I don't think this is going to work for me at all if you can't have folders, because how are you supposed to keep anything organized? Anyway, okay. Drag all them into there. And you'll have to go through all those hundreds of numbered entries to get to the, get to the new ones. Maybe the save file needs to be in here instead. I think it needs to be in there, doesn't it? Not in here. That looks like save states. Okay. Let's try it anyway. There should be something new on there. Let's try it. Uh, 
anything? Oh no, I haven't killed it, have I? Oh no, it's just slow. Okay. Let's get it. They're not in any order either. They're kind of in order. These ones are in order. But the numbers don't make any sense. And then it goes back to B. Who who put these files here? <sighs> what is going on? Pokemon Shiny Gold. Pokemon Lugia's Ocean. What are these? Pokemon Sea Blue. Pokemon Dark Sky. Pokemon Chaos Black. And then it goes back to A again. Oh my god, where is it? What is this list? What is going on? I know it was on here somewhere because I found it yesterday. Wait, none of the ones that I put on there are on here either. It's like nothing nothing I'm adding to this is actually appearing on the system itself. What's going on? It's just getting up to the end of the numbered ones and then looping back round. Even though I copied my games into this folder. Am I not putting them in the right folder? Is there two different folders maybe? That's taking me to the same place. There's another GBA emulator here. That one's also going to the same place. And it's just like they just don't exist. Am I doing something horribly wrong? ROMs? GBA. They should just be at the end of this list, right? Yeah, they're right here. Including the save file. So why are they not showing up? They're exactly the same file type. Anyone watching, do you have any idea why none of these games are appearing on the list? They're definitely in the right place. Is it because there's too many? I don't even know what busty bong is. <laughs> Let's try and... I don't even know what to suggest. Can't see anything apart from the pre installed games. That can't be right, can it? 908. That doesn't make sense either. It says there's 908 files, but there's 948. Something weird's going on with that one. I don't know what this is either. FF Play. But there's nothing in there. And no explanation for it either. And that, Open Bore. What's Open Bore? I might need to go away and do a bit of research on this before I do my video because it doesn't seem to be working properly. Oh yeah, you can't launch anything this way, can you? Is this... I don't think there's any way of choosing an emulator from there, because I thought maybe if I launch the games straight through that it might work, but... Oh, refresh ROMs. How did I get, How did I get that? Is that going to fix it? There's a secret hidden menu when you press the menu button from the title screen. Let's see. Has that made my games appear? Ooh, it's doing something new. Hey, are we getting somewhere? We're getting somewhere. 944, that sounds more like the right amount. Let's get all the way to the end of the list. Wait. 
It said 908 before, and it said there was 944, and now it says 925. What's going on? Oh my god. That's the fastest I can scroll through them as well by pressing that trigger button. Yay, they're here. Okay, good. Oh yeah, let's see whether open Lara works. I just realised I didn't actually put Yggdra Union on there. Oh, is this an old version? I mean, it, it works. It's not pretty. This is just the cave, not the one where you can actually walk around. But yeah, it looks cool. Kind of, although there's weird seams and old textures. Let's try F0. This will be a good test for the shoulder buttons. Oh yeah, there's nothing on there. This one's got a filter over the screen as well. I'm not sure whether you can tell on the camera. And it also says Nintendo and GBA at the top and the bottom, which is pretty cool. Let's always start with Windwalker. Let's do expert. We can do expert. I'm an expert at this game. I just realised you can see up my nose and the reflection. It's not a very reflective screen, actually. It's a really good screen. Really good quality. Let's zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. This will be a good test as well, because I know this game off by heart. So, First of all, the triggers feel a lot better than the uh, analogue pocket. The map is flickering though, which is a kind of worrying sign. It means that the frame rate's not um, not one hundred percent fixed. It definitely dipped a bit there as well. I don't know whether that's something you can pick up on camera or not. But yeah, the triggers feel good. Oh, I should have saved that boost. Never mind. Should have saved it for here, then you can cut that corner out. But it seems to be playing really well though, apart from the very slight frame rate issues. Which mean the map doesn't refresh properly, but... It's not something you would notice in game, when you're actually playing it. Let's see if I can get the shortcut at the right time this time. Stop trying to push me out of the way. Whoa, what did I do then? Everyone's trying to attack me. Okay, go. Whee! Although it looks like you're going slow because the ship, like, wiggles a bit, it doesn't actually affect your speed at all if you're boosting through there. Two laps to go. Oh yeah, this one doesn't talk to you. GP Legend does. He goes, you got boost power. Yeah, I'm really impressed though. It feels really good. And it's a nice big colourful screen too. Whoa! <laughs> I went a bit all over the place there. Ah! Uh, JB Crystal? I don't think so. Hey Starlock! How are you doing? I've got to catch up with him now. I've been having a whole load of issues getting stuff to work properly on this, but... When you're just playing the games, it seems pretty good. Oh no. I blame the fact that I looked up at the chat. Am I really going to finish in third? No, come on. Second, I'll take that. That's a bit better. Anyway, yeah, when you're actually playing the games, it seems really good. And I'm glad I found out the reason why I couldn't see my saves. Couldn't see my ROMs. That's so stupid. I don't know why you need to do that. So you need to go back to the main menu, press the menu button there, and then refresh ROMs, and it'll update everything. 
So somewhere on that list of GBA games is Yig Reunion, and I'll see whether the save file that I just copied over actually works or whether it doesn't. So we shall find out if we can find it. I don't get it. It says there's 944 games, but there isn't. I presume it's doing the scan because I just tried to update it. There's only 925. But somewhere in this list of 925 is the Yggdra Union. I'll probably end up deleting all of these and just put my own games on there instead. It might be good for me to actually make a save file as well and then we can see where they actually end up. I hate the fact that it's not in any particular order. I keep thinking it's alphabetical and something will just come along and throw me off. Oh, it's Riviera. I thought that was it then. I only found out recently that Riv Riviera and Yggdra Union are actually part of the same series. I'm sure it was on there. Got all the Mega Man Battle Network games. Maybe it's not on here. No, it wouldn't be that high up. Uh, let's just load a game and make a save and we can see where the save files end up. Oh yeah, something else as well. If you press R2 on the back, I think, you can actually fast forward the game. Although it doesn't really seem to fast forward that much, which is a bit weird. I thought it would be a lot faster than that. It only seems very slightly sped up, like not even two times. But maybe it's good for getting through this. I just want to make a save file. Ah. Okay. I was just finished moving house. I just wanted to make a save file. Oh yeah, there might be an F-Zero one. Although I didn't finish the race, so I'm not sure whether it would actually save it or not if I didn't do anything. Okay, we can do one here. Ah, save the game. So, you have to hold the power button down for ages. Oh my god. Is it going to turn off? I presume it's turned off. I hate them not having power switches. Why? Alright, let's go back over to the PC. Let's see if we can find out where those save files are. <clears throat> not in downloads. They will be on here somewhere. Let's see. ROMs. GBA. Not that. Go away. No. There's a save file I put on there. But you can't really see it very well. There you go. There's a save file I put on there. No, I couldn't see any option to power off. Apparently, at some point, after you hold the power button down for a certain amount of time, a screen pops up to ask you if you want to turn it off. But it didn't show up that time, which was weird. And yeah, there's no option in the menu or anything. Which you would think there would be. Anyway, it doesn't look like the save files actually go in here. So let's go back to removable on disk and type in... SAV, I guess? Uh, that's the one I added. This should be... This should be an F-Zero one. Sort by date modified. Is it in here? No? In here? Uh, that's all in Chinese. In there? Hmm. 
maybe? SRM isn't isn't the regular save file type though, is it? Let's try it again anyway. Download the save from there. And wait, what? Oh, search results. How do I just get the address? Ah, uh, never mind. Download. I think it's already in there anyway. Oh my god, I'm not used to Windows. Why can't you have tabs? Okay, drag that in there anyway. And while we're at it, download the game. And put that in ROMs GBA. It's so annoying that you can't use folders. That seems like such an oversight. Just wait for that to finish. Why can't you use folders? Even the EverDrive can use folders. I'm guessing it's an issue with the uh, built-in software. <coughs> I've been sat down too long. At a really weird angle. I don't know whether you can see. Look at the look how much room I've got. <laughs> My arm is literally going through the tripod just to get this to work. So I can get this angle, which is kind of weird because the actual angle is more like that and I had to tilt the camera sideways to get it to line up properly. Would a different save format have a different file name? Maybe. I can Let's see what games lights we have here. I can take my save file off Metroid Zero Mission and see what that is. I've got that game with me. Let's try that in a minute. But let's um let's try this first. So put that in there. Oh you can't see the PC. There you go. Just copy it over the actual game file as well. And let's cut that from there because that was actually in saves in here, wasn't it? So paste that in there. Okay, so it's only in that one place now. Not sure why it's a different file type. And while we're at it, let's try. Actually, maybe, bear with me a second. I might go and find F0 maximum velocity because then we've got one to compare it with. Okay, I didn't find that, but I found Pokemon Ruby, so we'll try that. I think there's a save file on it. Let's see how that compares. Oh, okay. I found it. There's diff two different options. You can't quite see. At the bottom here, look. Save file type as I'm guessing it needs to be SRAM maybe we can put that straight in there as well hmm I guess it needs to match the name of the ROM so let's try and overwrite that Actually, does this... I can't remember whether I actually cleared the save file off this or not as well. So let's just boot the game up quickly and see whether it did actually have a save that we can check that will exactly, um, you know, match on the other side. So give that... Oh my god, it's taken ages. Look how slow that is.
<laughs> Squiggly Monster just sent me a tweet saying he was enjoying watching the stream, but he's had to leave to go to work to play on his Miu Mini. Okay, yeah, so there should be a save file with 1 hour 54 on it. And um, I'll try... I'll try and save that Yggdra Union one in that other file type too. Let's try download save as an SRM type. Not sure what the difference is, but that's what it wants. Okay, that was quick. Well, they're both there. Okay. And let's just check that the ROMs are in there as well. Cool. Okay, so we should at least have two things working. Let's find out. Let's go back to the screen. Oh yeah, you'll like this. Look at that cheap micro SD card it came with. It literally just says 64. I'm not really sure whether I'd like the fact that you can see the light coming through the top of the case. Like, the LED is maybe a bit too bright. And it takes ages to turn on as well. Anyway. Let's try GBA. It might be easier to go into recent, actually. Pokemon Ruby. Let's see whether it has that save file. And if it does, then that means... Do I need to... Uh, reset, restart. If it does, that means that we've figured out the save format. Here we go. Yay! It did work. I don't know who Bobby is. But it worked. Just 64. 64 fake bits of fake memory. Okay, that's good. Let's see whether Yggdra Union copied over properly. Because that is a game that I've actually been playing. Where is it? Ah, oh, I forgot. So stupid. You have to go all the way back here and then refresh. And then you have to wait for this. So, time for some more monster. I don't know why it needs to refresh every time. I don't know how I ended up with Bobby's copy of Pokemon Ruby. Who is Bobby? What happened to my save? Yeah, very, very cheap and dirty 64 gig something card. I might just buy a nicer one. I've probably got one lying around somewhere. I have this random tub full of SD cards and stuff. For situations like this. Anyway, let's see whether this loads up my save file that I've actually been playing on the analog pocket recently. Hmm, no, it didn't. Interesting. Wonder why that didn't have any save file at all. Well, we can find out. Let's let's fast forward a bit and get into the game and then save and see what happens. Oh my god, the fast forward hardly does anything like that's normal speed. That's fast forward. I put both SAV and SRM on there, so I thought one of them would pick up. Although maybe the two were overwriting each other or something. There's a lot of talking in this game. I wonder if there's a way of actually speeding up the fast forward. Because it's hardly seeming to make any difference, really. Come on. There's three types of saves. Okay. Well, we'll make a... Uh, make a save anyway and see what it comes out as. Hopefully there's a way of converting it, if there is. Ah, uh, so much talking, and there's no way to skip it either. I died at one point in this game, and I had to go back like an hour, and I couldn't skip any of the cutscenes. 
the time. Ready. More talking. Oh no, do I need to go through all this? Yeah, it seems like I need to go through all the tutorial stuff. That's really weird. I love the music on these fights. That's how it's done. I know, I know, I just want to save. Maybe it did already save. Shall we try it? It'll probably realise that we've started the game. And let's see if there's any option to turn the system off. Is there in settings, maybe? Yeah, power off, it's in settings. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of different options here as well, like increasing the luminance of the screen and the hue and the saturation and stuff. And that screen is very broken. Look how the text just goes way over the box. And there's a whole bunch of different themes too. Um... Oh yeah, I wonder if that updated the PS1 games. That was probably why I couldn't see the games that I tried adding earlier. Yeah, it is there. Although I don't know which one to try. Let's try this. So I tried, for those of you who have just joined recently earlier, I tried adding some uh, PS1 games off the Andernick, which is charging at the minute, so I can't pull it over. But yeah, it looks like it worked. That's cool. Maybe. Hmm, okay, I don't know how to get around this on here. Insufficient memory to save a new file. How do... Oh, this has got a different menu actually for the PS1. Mem card manager? What what are these random save files? I've not even played on the PS1 on here before, but it's got all these random games on there. Um, and there's loads of them? What the hell? Look at all this. What? There's nine of them, and they've all got stuff on. And there's no option in here to do anything with that? What? Okay, this is just weird. <laughs> just keep mashing X, it'll get through it eventually. Okay, I guess I'll have to rely on save states. It was a bit worrying the way that was a bit um, screen tearing coming up there as well. Let's see whether the actual game plays okay. It looks okay. Puzzle mode, of course. That's why you play Tetris Plus. Where the loading's a bit painful. Weird. Why is it struggling to play this game? This is a very, very simple game. See that? How it's juddering a little bit. Yeah, once it's in the game, you can't really notice any issue with it, though. Wow, how am I doing so badly on the first level? 
I'm getting awful places. Oh my god. I'm sorry, Professor. Oh my god. Am I really gonna fail this? Apparently no, I am not a Tetris Pro. Look at this awful gameplay. Let's try and shove that one down there. We can do it. I think I've messed up with this tower here. Okay, that might be good. I think we're screwed. There's no saving him now. Let's try again. Let's try again. I am good at this game, I promise. It's so cool that I can play this on a handheld, though. Come on, give me nice pieces. Look how much better that was. Ready? <laughs> Amazing. Ouch. Let's try the other games that I've got on here. Some more demanding games. I don't know why there's so many different files for it. Look at all that. Um, can't remember what else I put on here. Oh yeah, Gran Turismo. Let's see how that runs. I'll need to figure out the memory card stuff. I don't know why it thinks there's like a hundred things on the memory card. Let's just... Whatever, 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 whatever. Let's just get to the game. Loading. I wonder if there's a way of getting rid of the loading because obviously there's no CD that needs. Okay, there's a bit of stuttering going on. In the background. Ooh, some pretty bad stuttering down the side of the screen as well. I don't know whether you can pick that up on camera. Oh, yeah, that's not good. Maybe this game is a bit too demanding for it. I mean, it's playable, but not great. Yeah, I wonder if there's any settings to... Let's see what options we've got. V-Sync, frame skip. No, it didn't make any difference. Oh yeah, you can definitely tell in the sky. Look how... Look how the trees are sort of... Ghosting. There's definitely something wrong with it. Let's try V-Sync off. Maybe it was struggling? That actually seems to have helped a bit. Weird. I wonder why turning V-Sync off would help. Yeah, it actually looks a lot better now. That's strange. Yeah, maybe the speed of the SD card matters as well. Let's try that. Turn on frame rate. What are we running at? There you go. Pretty solid 60 frames, and I was looking the wrong way and went straight into uh, straight into the wall. Oh my god, I can't stay here. Okay. Yeah, actually turning V-Sync off helped fix the issue with the trees stuttering. That's strange. Maybe it, because it wasn't quite hitting 60, it was making it go a bit... It almost seems like V-Sync's on when it's off though, which is weird. 
Threaded SPU. I don't know what that means. Software filter. The options there, but it doesn't do anything. Not sure what all that is. Speed hacks. I don't want to touch all that. That's scary. Extra stuff. Change CD image. Oh, that's back to the memory card manager. So weird. Where where have all these random save files come from? Did they just put someone's random memory card on there? But overall, though, for such a little handheld, that is really impressive. Look at that. Playing Gran Turismo on something that size. That's just really cool. Anyway, let's put it back in the PC and uh, let's see what the save files look like. Oh yeah, I'll turn it off the proper way. Settings, power off, power off. Yeah, weird, but when VSync was turned off, I didn't notice any sort of tearing or anything, which is what you would usually expect. Okay, let's do a bit of digging and find out what's going on with the save files. Well, there's only them two. That one doesn't have any date associated with it, which is weird. What? That is weird. There's nothing there at all. No modified date, no access date. It must have been created at some point. Let's try Metroid Zero Mission anyway. I'll figure out some way of getting it on there later. Let's try. Download save. Let's see. It's weird you can't tell what type it's meant to be. I'm guessing SRAM is what this needs. And it needs to be named the same as the ROM as well, doesn't it? So let's check the ROMs. Was it one that I added? Search. Metroid. Just to be safe, I'll give it the same title. And eject. Oh, yeah, sh shall I check whether the... FRAM didn't seem to be an option, though, on here, if we load this up. Download, save. You only get these two options. Well, I'll try making a save on the console anyway, and we can compare them. Let's see what happens. And I do get pretty annoyed with screen tearing, so it is something that I would notice quite easily. And frame rate issues. Anyway, right, let's see what we can find. We're, we're all figuring this out together. Oops, just pulled the microphone away. And remember to refresh ROMs. Also, won't have the updated name. Yeah, sorry, I forgot to check the file name. We can do that in a minute. I guess we can do it from here. Do you remember what the name of the save file was? Anyway, let's check this out, see whether this has got my save on.
Hmm. No, no save there. So let's create a save from scratch. And let's see what that does. Do I need to go to a save station first? Oh, there's a bit of stutter in that. Did you see that? That's not good if it can't run GBA games at full speed. Yeah, we know how to use them all for. Are you really teaching me how to use them all for? Yeah, see that? Oh, it's kind of cleared up me. There. Ooh, that's bad. It's clear, and it's stuttering going that way. That's not good. I wonder why it's doing that. Surely it should be able to handle a GBA game easy. And the... Uh, can you hear the sound quality? It's really bad. I don't know how easily that will pick up on Twitch. Well, it doesn't sound good. It sounds really crackly. Let's... Uh, Sorry, you can't see. Let's see what options we've got. I don't think it's frame skip that you need. It'd be, yeah, some sort of refresh rate. I think this screen actually has a really weird refresh rate. I was saying earlier, if I change the, um, the shutter speed of the camera, I don't know whether you'll be able to see it on that screen. But you can kind of see. See how the... No, you can't really make it out. It's easier to make out in full screen. You can kind of see how the lines are flickering. Um, I had to put it on 1 over 80, which is a really weird... Um, Yeah, there's not really any options. Turn that overlay off. Also, it doesn't quite... Yeah, 59. Maybe that's the issue. Maybe it's just trying to catch back up with itself. Anyway, there's a save point right there, so we can see what the save files are like. Hey, Tom Sutton, hello. How are you doing this evening? Right, let's see what sort of save file this gives us. Save complete. So now if we exit, and I'll shut it down properly, and then we can swap back over to the PC. Power off. Working at your work job. You're being naughty and watching me instead of doing work. <laughs> I don't blame you. I always have something on the other screen. Usually YouTube strategy podcast, which I know a lot of people probably wouldn't find very interesting. But I do. Anyway, let's see. Retro Arc. Is it Retro Arc or is it Retro Arch? Because it's spelt Arch, but I've heard people call it Arc, so I don't know. Uh, anyway, where are we going? Save files. Am I in the wrong place? Saves. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. Why does it say it's never been invented? It's never been created. Neither of these worked either. Arc as in archive. Okay. That makes sense. Right. I don't know what's going on with these save files. I'm going to delete all of them. 
I'm not going to put anything on there of my own. I'm just going to take the card back out. So the save files is completely empty. I'm going to go in here, make one save on Metroid, turn it off, put the put the card back in the computer, and figure out what's going on. Because I really want to be able to transfer some of my actual save files onto it. Recent Metroid Zero Mission. Hey, it remembered where I was. But that's just because of the uh, internal save, right? So let's go and make a new one. Okay, save complete. Let's exit game. Let's get to the bottom of this. Settings, power off, okay. Take the card out. Let's see what's going on with this. Back on the PC. Card back in. Oh, yeah, something else that's a bit worrying. You know the card was the card was like a super cheap weird card that just says 64. It also came with this super cheap weird micro SD card reader, which worked once. And then I, I tried putting a different card in there. I tried putting the same card back in there. It just would not register that it had been put in the computer since then. So I had to go and get a different one. So that is just dead after one use. I don't know how cheap, how cheaply made that was. But that's a bit worrying. Okay, that is the save file that it created. SRM save. But it doesn't have any modified date. It doesn't have any created date at all. So I don't really understand what's going on there. But that's the save file. How do we test it? SRM, SRM, okay. Let's delete that. Let's open up. Let's open up Operator. Let's download the save from my cartridge. Make it an SRM file, because that's what it was. Let's put that in saves. Now it's empty. Save. And then when that's finished, when those blue dots get to the end, it should appear in here. And then we can try and put it back into the system and see whether it recognizes the save file. That's taken a while. I don't remember it taking that long last time. Yay, I got a new comment on my GBA history video. Someone said the, uh, considering when it was developed, the Project Atlantis probably would have launched at either a ludicrous price or with a terrible battery life. Two factors that killed so many of their competition. Do you guys agree with that? Do you think the uh, Project Atlantis would have been dead on arrival because of issues outside of Nintendo's control? And I'm getting loads of comments on my top 15 GBA games video as well. Which is exciting. That get, that video is doing really well. Right, we have the save file. SRM. It's got the same name. Maybe it's getting confused because it has a created a modified date. But anyway, let's try. I'm going to press format then. That would be bad. What games have you been getting off the eShop, Starlack? It closes down. When does it close down? Very soon, right? Okay, let's see. If it knows about my save file. I'm also wondering if, because it launches straight into the game whether it's going to be confused as well because it was launching from like a, a save state kind of thing wasn't it so let's see if there's a way of restarting it from the beginning there we go oh 
Oh, it might it might do. Let's see. Yeah, there's nothing there. So let's exit. If there's still nothing there after a refresh, I'll do another save and then try and find out what the difference is between my one and the one that this creates. Okay, right, we've refreshed. Let's go back in. Let's restart. Surely I've done everything right at this point, right? I don't see what else I could possibly do to get this to work. There's nothing there. Okay. That's really disappointing. I was really hoping I'd be able to use some of my saves. Sometimes restart is a soft restart. How do I do a hard restart? Close content, maybe? I know that's going to kick me back to the main menu, but it might. It might refresh it. Did that unload it? I guess it did, because it went back to the start of the game. No. Right, how do I do that then? Close content didn't do anything. There isn't really any other options. Boot mode? No. Manage core options. Reset. Maybe boot to BIOS instead. Let's try that. Exit. Let's try it. I've come right right out. And let's go in through there as well. So GBA. Okay, it's doing a scan again. Maybe that helps. Let's do a scan. Let, let it refresh everything. And then let's go all the way down to this crazy big list of things that are completely out of any logical order that they just filmed the SD card with. Oh my god, there's so many. Okay, let's see what happens this time. Okay, good. We've got the actual boot up screen. So that might make a difference. Let's see. And we have nothing. We still have nothing. So I'll try making a save and see what that comes back with. That's really annoying. Fast forward. There is a fast forward, but it hardly does anything. Right, we're going to go and do this again. Okay, get the morph ball. Let's see how fast we can do it. Speed run. Get into the first save station. Ow. 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 Am I going to die before I get there? Okay, let's save. Then we can play Drake and Josh if, Josh if this doesn't work. Okay. Save complete. Exit game. So there should be two different save files on there now, and then we can do a comparison between the two. And see why that one's working and my one isn't. <laughs> it might do. I'm half expecting that to happen, yes. We shall see. If it does, then I'm guessing there's just no way of transferring saves. I might just have to give up on that idea. Okay, let's find out. Fingers crossed. What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? Has it overwritten mine? Is that... SAV file different to the SRM file that I uploaded. It's got rid of the dates from both of them. So I can't even see which one mine was. Why are they both there? Why has it got both types? <laughs> this is just so confusing. Yeah, it's overwritten it. 
Is it, do you think it's because it doesn't know what the date is? Why why has it got both save types? Right, what I'm gonna do, I've got one more. But yeah, I added the SAV file and it overwrit my SRM file. I'm gonna make both file types. So I'm gonna make an SAV file. I'm gonna save it over the one that's already there. If I overwrite it, yes. That one goes really fast. That's weird. Okay. I'm going to make a SRM file. I'm going to overwrite it. And then we're going to have a look and make sure that they're both mine. That one went really fast too. 9.35, that is now. So, yeah, I thought one of them might be a save state. Right, they're both there anyway. Let's see what happens, I guess. And now that it's booting up into the BIOS rather than the game, it might keep them a bit longer. Maybe? Who knows? All right, let's try again. Let's try again. Okay. Okay, the SD card's in. Right, fingers crossed. Else I just give up at this point. If this doesn't work, there is no solution at the minute. Well, let's see. I hate how slow it is to turn on. That's one of my biggest gripes of this so far. Okay. Game. GBA. Metroid Zero Mission. Why did it boot up straight away? Restart. Why did it boot up straight away? I specifically told it not to. Ah, uh, okay, let's see what's here. Nothing's there, nothing's there. Is it because I didn't refresh everything? Do I need to come out? Refresh ROMs. It only says refresh ROMs though, it doesn't say refresh saves or anything. And I have one other idea, I'm going to have a look in the files. There is a file explorer here. So if we go into RetroArch, if we go into saves. I don't really get what you can see in there. I guess that is whatever the system can see. And you can't see any information about them either. It might have forgot settings when I turned it off, possibly. Let's do a scan anyway. Let's see whether that helps. Maybe you need to actually save it from inside the emulator before you switch it off. I might need to try and do that then. We can try that. Let's try. Let's try. Options. No, it was there. It just didn't do it. Boot to BIOS. Uh, there's two different options here. Maybe try original BIOS. See whether that helps. Backup save method. Hmm. Does that make a difference? We've got a few things to try. Let's restart. Still nothing. Let's try and save one more time, and if this doesn't work, then there's just no way of doing it, I don't think. Unless anyone watching has any ideas that I haven't tried yet. Well, I've run out of ideas. I'll try the other save backup method thing, see if that makes a different kind of file. Yeah, can I do that in fast forward? Yes. Yeah, this is probably more effort than it's worth to get these games working on here. Okay, save room. Let's see what it does this time. If it does nothing, I'm just going to cry. Save complete. Is there anything, before we, before we exit the game, is there anything I should do here before we come out of it? Is there anything I should do in here? 
There's safe states, there's safe slots, but I don't really think a safe state would help. Override? Save game override? Save a state, I can try it. Okay. Did you notice how it cut the writing off in the corner as well? Okay. Saved state. Let's see what's on the card now then. I bet it's the same. Well, let's find out. Wait, what? 9.35? Wait, this... The date modified for my original save files come back. But it didn't do anything. I'm guessing it's just broken then. Yeah. I just don't think it's working properly. Um... I mean... Let me show you what we were looking at earlier. So apparently it needs this operating system, which works well on the regular version. But it doesn't work yet on the Plus. So the version of the operating system that's on the Plus is is in Alpha, maybe? But I can't see what version of the operating system it's running. But then someone else said that it's not going to be compatible with the Plus. Then you need to wait until the end of the month. So maybe I'm just trying to do this too soon. And it's just not quite working properly yet. So I'll try again next month, I guess. I'm kind of stuck on where I can go for now. And I don't think there's even any links or options for the Plus version yet. Yeah, it's not even on the on the Reddit page yet. No, well, I'm not sure because you can zoom in a little bit. Someone here said that they'd installed a dev build, but then the next person down said that it's not compatible, so I don't know. And I didn't want to try it in case it bricks it, and I'm supposed to be making a video for the company that sent it to me, so I don't know what to do. Do I do the video and just say that things aren't working, but they might work in the future? Or maybe I should just do like a first impressions video and then an updated one when the new firmware comes out. Because I've got the GitHub open here, but it doesn't mention the plus anywhere. And this is the latest, the latest beta version. Well, this one is, but it doesn't mention the plus anywhere. And I don't want to download it in case it breaks. So I don't know whether I should just leave it for now, maybe. It's probably the best option, I guess. <clears throat> but, yeah. Let's go back on there and try out a few more things, though, because there are a few pre-installed things. Yeah, I can. I've got contacts with them, so I can try and find out after this what's, what they actually want me to say about it, or what the firmware is and stuff. You okay? Yeah, uh, I don't think they'll be able to see them because of the ways I've got the camera set up. Toodles. Let's see. Come here. Go on, full cam. Toodles, come. Yeah, oh, there he is. Yeah, they can see him now. Oh, oh Skittles is on Twitch. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to. Hmm. Skittles, can you figure out the save files for me? Nope. No. Yay, first time chatter. He's gone now. That's it, you're gonna leave now. You're only here for my dog. Let's see what else we've got. Let's try out some MAME stuff. I'm not sure why it needs to scan them ones. I guess it just scans everything. Right, 1,236. 
Yeah, I'm sure they would be. They they've seemed really really easy to talk to, so that's good. I'll definitely ask anyway before I do the video because I don't want to give it a bad review in case it's just because it's pre-release, you know, firmware and stuff. Anyway, let's check out some arcade games. I haven't really checked out anything arcade related yet. Let's see, what's a game that I know that we can try out? Oh, cool, it's got Mega Man Power Battle. Let's try that. These were like, oh, did it not load? These are like boss rush games, which are really, really cool. Oh, no, it's not working. Let's try this one. Weird, the loading screen's like flickering a lot, but why are they on there if it doesn't work? Yeah, there's definitely some issues. Let's try Mercs instead, see whether that one loads. Is it doing it? anything? Oh no, I'm not allowed to play it. <laughs> you bought the arcade games on Switch the other day, that's cool. I didn't know they were on the Switch. Okay, nice. It looks like it's running well. This is a really fun game too. They had it at Play Expo. The three player arcade cabinet. Obviously, not the ideal aspect ratio, but it seems to be running fine, which is good. It's a shame that Mega Man didn't work. There is, um, oh, what have I found? There's a menu. A separate menu to the one. I'm sure there was a way of dodging somehow. Maybe not. Seems to be running really well, though. Unfortunately, with this lens, I can't really focus up close. So that's as close as, as I can get, realistically. I'm thinking of getting a macro lens soon so I can do some nice close-ups of stuff. That's MAME's menu. What is this menu, then? Is this MAME inside RetroArch? There's no way of pausing though when I open that menu up. I can't really read it very well either. Um. Okay, they didn't think this through. This isn't good. So you can get you can get to the main menu, but nothing does anything. You can't actually... Yeah, you can't do anything. Oh! Okay, X. Wow, that's a lot of options. Okay, cool. Maybe that maybe that does work. Fine then. Let's try another game. It's a shame the Mega Man ones didn't work. Mars Matrix. I wonder whether that will work. It'd be interesting to see this one running because that's a really. Oh, I didn't do anything. It's weird that some of them just refuse to load. Completely. I'm guessing Street Fighter will be okay. Oh, let's see what else there is. CPS3. There's not many options in there. Let's try Street Fighter 3. That had a really weird preview image for some reason. None of these are loading. That's not loading either. Why put them on there if they don't work? Let's try JoJo's. Nothing. FBA hack. 
What is this? What are these weird files? Anyway, let's just try something, see whether it loads. It's doing something. It's thinking about it. It's thinking some more. It's still thinking. I'll take a drink while it's waiting. It's still thinking. I don't think it's going to do anything. Oh, 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 <laughs> it's changing loading screens. No, it gave up. That's annoying. So I guess nothing on this works. I don't get it. If they want to advertise the system, why put games on here that it can't run? Oh, okay, we've got something going on on this one. Is that just the boot up sequence? Maybe. That makes even less sense though, because this is running on the same system as those other games that didn't boot. Okay, can I play? This one seems to be working fine. It makes even less sense. It was all part of the same engine. Uh, somehow I've put it in two-player. I can't get anywhere. Oh dear. Anyway, it runs. That's what I wanted to find out. So what's different about that one? CPS3. Maybe CPS3 is just too powerful for it then. Yeah. IGS? Don't know what IGS is. I've not even heard of most of these games. Let's just try one. No. I'm guessing they just dumped everything that's on one of their emulator handhelds and just shoved them all on this, whether they worked or not. Let's try a random MAME game. Okay, that worked. Seems to be running fine, too. Oh, it's a little bit stuttery. There are some Neo Geo games on here separately as well, so we can try them. But yeah, that seems fine. Looks nice. I probably won't get round to it in this video, but in this stream, sorry. But I wanted to try some of the Pico 8 stuff too, because it seems like there's a Pico 8 core on here, which would be really cool, because I think this is the perfect form factor for Pico 8. Okay, should we try a Neo Geo game? I had a lot of issue with Neo Geo BIOS on the Ambernic version. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's working. I think as soon as you see that other loading screen, you know it's going to break. Shoot. What is shoot? Is there just a list of shoot em ups? And then there's a bunch of random ones here that aren't assigned to anything. Let's try Alien Storm. I like that game. No, it's dead. That's, that's not really a demanding arcade game, though, so I don't know why that wouldn't work. Bats are going to be cool if that one works, although I'm not holding out much hope on any of these. Ah, no. This is so annoying. Why are they on here? Did they not test it at all? Do you think it's a BIOS issue? Do I need to try and find them, maybe? There is a separate Neo Geo... Wait... It's the same. There's a separate Neo Geo icon, but it shows exactly the same stuff as MAME. Do I need to load the Neo Geo ones up on this side, maybe? It worked! Yeah, it worked! That's even more confusing. Why do they show up twice? Am 
whatever. Just want to see how it runs. Okay, there's a fast forward button on there. There's no main menu though. Let's play some extreme baseball. Whoa, home run. Oh, foul ball. Okay. Not a home run. Let's see if it's got Metal Slug. I know those games off by heart. Yeah, there's some. Let's try one. <clears throat> yeah, it's loading. Awesome. Ah, oh, it was loading. Let's try a different one. Why did it kind of load for a second and then give up? It's thinking about it. Come on. You know you want to. It'll be interesting to see what the battery... Um, percentages because I charged it up fully before this um, but we've been streaming for about excuse me for about two and a half hours I think so it'll be interesting to see how much that's gone down that one's just stuck on a loading screen I don't think it's doing anything No. It won't even let me come off it, look. It's stuck. Oh, it's doing something. Is it loading? Is it going to crash? Whoa, it's there! That was weird. Took forever to start up. That makes even less sense. Are the BIOS on there or not? See what the controls are. It seems to be running okay. A little bit of slowdown, but nothing unplayable. And I mean, Metal Slug's kind of notorious for having slowdown anyway. So I'd be happy to play this like this. Heavy machine gun. Where's the rocket launcher? Oh, I missed it. Thank you. Yeah, this actually runs really well, I'm surprised. This runs better than I thought it would. I'd be very happy playing this on here. And I just love the Metal Slug games. Anyway, let's try something else out. I'm really happy about that. That's great. It looks like they've got all of them on there too, which is cool. Metal Slug 2 is the one with slowdown, yeah. That one's always had bad slowdown, even on the original, hasn't it? I think I remember playing it on the on the Wii collection, and it was really bad on there as well. Let's try out Neo Geo Pocket. I haven't tried anything on there. Try out Metal Slug on the Neo Geo Pocket. Okay, that's confusing. A is B. The one. Looks nice on here, though. It's got a nice little green overlay. Yeah, no issues with Neo Geo Pocket. These Metal Slug games are pretty fun, actually, because they're more, like, mission-based.
yeah, I'm pleased with this. This seems to be working well. Dun, 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 It's weird hearing the 8-bit versions of the Metal Slug songs. It says, Metal Slug First Mission, I believe it's called. Um, oh yeah, that's, that's the weird thing about the Neo Geo Pocket version. You have to press start to switch between the gun and the bullets. There's the metal slug in question. Seems to be running perfectly. No no issues at all with Neo Geo. Pocket at least. And I guess regular Neo Geo too. Metal Slug 3 ran really well. So I think when when this thing works, it works really well. But it definitely has a lot of weird quirks, which I guess can be chalked up to the fact that the um, firmware is in beta. But I will definitely check with the company to see whether that's the case before I do my video. But yeah, I won't play too much more of that, but I'm really happy with that. That works great. Let's see what other systems there are. PC Engine. I haven't tried PC Engine yet. What have they got on PC Engine? Turricon. Hmm. I don't know why they came up with these game lists. Like, why do some of them have numbers in front of them and then other ones just don't? Uh, let's see. What, what is a good PC Engine game for me to try out? Okay. There's one I'm very familiar with. Where's Raiden? There it is. Got a nice little border with a PC engine down the side, which is cool. I wonder how it will do the turbo fire. Okay, A is bombs. Whoops. Well, good news is no frame rate issues. Although I cannot play this game without turbo fire. Okay. For some, for some reason, pressing Y got rid of the borders. Oh, and they very slowly came back. That is weird. I've got to figure out where the uh, turbo buttons are for this. Let's see. There must be an option somewhere. Input, maybe? Turbo delay. Turbo on or off. Uh, controls, turbo fire. What? That's a lot of options, but no turbo. Default turbo button B. It's not doing anything. Where's my turbo? I don't get that. I think it's not referring to the right um, controls in the game. It must be in here somewhere. Turbo fire. Single button hold, maybe? No, not doing anything. Not sure what's going on there. Anyone got any idea? <clears throat> Single button toggle. Didn't do anything. Turbo default button. Let's try... Which one is 1 and 2? R2. Let's set it to something that I know isn't being used for it. 
anything else. It doesn't seem to be doing anything. Port one controls. So there's no options there for anything turbo related. Maybe you just can't then. That's kind of going to ruin the PC Engine if you can't use turbo buttons. I'll figure that out after the stream, I guess. What else have we got? PS1 we've tried. Super Famicom we've tried. Sega Master System. We haven't tried that yet. What is a good game on the Master System? Ninja Gaiden's good on Master System. Let's try that. Looks a little blurry. I don't know whether you can really tell on the camera or not. Yeah, it doesn't look as clear as the NES, but frame rate's good. There's definitely some shimmering issues. Which tells me that the scaling isn't correct. Like you probably can't tell, and I can't really get get it close enough. Can you see the way the floor's kind of shimmering as you walk? Look at the spikes there. Let's see if there's a way of fixing that. Okay, that's a weird menu. You can hardly read it. Scaling. Stretched. Native times two. Let's try that. How do I bring the menu up? Quit. Continue. Well, okay, that didn't help. Now we've got some random words at the top and a broken menu at the bottom. Can't even read what it says. EPX scale. Let's put it back to how it was before. Is that going to be better or worse? Worse. I guess you'll just have to. That's impossible. Why? That didn't make any difference. That didn't make any difference. Maybe there is no fix in it. I can't read it. Hi. Hi. That's why I've got my headphones on in case anyone pressed any other things. Okay, there are no other options. You either have overly stretched screen, so you can't see what's going on, or you have a blurry screen, so. Uh, unfortunately, I will have to give Master System emulation a thumbs down. That is not very good, unfortunately. Wonder Swan. I did try Wonder Swan a bit last night, and it seemed to be pretty good. I mean, not that Wonder Swan has much that you can actually play in English, unfortunately. Oh yeah, that's that's going to be kind of weird, playing a sideways game. Oh, okay, maybe the buttons aren't the buttons aren't um, set up properly either. Yeah, that's not going to work. It doesn't have enough buttons to play the Wonder Swan. That just doesn't work at all. At least not for the vertical games. Let's see if it's got the Mega Man games on. Or it'd be uh, Rockman, wouldn't it? Well... It's got one of the Rockman games. I played this one a bit last night. It seemed to work fine. So yeah, when they, when they work with the controls, then yeah, they're fine. 
I always find that explosion really cheap looking. There's a kind of a cheap looking uh, Wonder Swan filter at the top as well, which I guess is the on screen overlay. If you turn that off. Yeah, there you go. If you want a clean output, you can do that. And it said it was translated, but it's not. So I don't know why they lied to me in the title. But yeah. Look at that death animation where they just sort of split and slowly fade away. It just looks weird. But in terms of graphics, I mean, it's pretty impressive. It kind of looks like an early GBA game. Which I guess Wonder Swan is kind of close to GBA. Maybe not quite as good, I think. I, I presume that they just put all these on here for me to try it out, but it just seems like they've just copied them all from somewhere else. Um, as far as I know, you can buy it and you can choose to buy a certain size of micro SD card to go with it, but I doubt they would be allowed to put the games on there. And from what I saw, Shoot is just a list of loads of different shooting games, some of which work and some of which don't work, so... Um, let's try Truxton. Everyone loves Truxton. Oh yeah, for some reason all the shooting games just come up in Chinese too. Yeah, I don't think they would be allowed to sell it with ROMs. Oh no, how is this going to work if it's sideways? Like... Ooh, listen, that is very slow. Oh dear. Wait. And the buttons don't do anything? Oh, it's crashed. It's crashed. Yeah, I don't think any of this shooting section works properly either. That one already looks broken. Warming up. Oh, it looks okay now. Not sure why they boot in um, Tate, if you want to call it that. Tate mode. But the buttons don't do anything. That one rewinds. That one, I don't know. Save and load. That one goes in slow motion. <laughs> what? Do you want to know the controls? That is fire. R2. Oh my god. That's ridiculous. I guess maybe it's so you don't put your hand over the screen. That's just weird. I mean, it works, I guess. It's not comfortable, though. Having to press the triggers on the back of the screen to fire. It looks nice, though, on the screen. And the frame rate's fine. But I would not enjoy playing it that way. I have a million other better ways of playing Twin B. No, I'm not going to kiss it. <laughs> anyway. Oh yeah, the menu for that is all completely in Chinese. I'm guessing that one is quit. No? Ah, I'm trapped. Oh, maybe it was. Yeah. So that's that's what all of them are. And I think, I think I've covered everything now. There are some other things as well that I wanted to try, but maybe not in this stream. So we have links compatibility that doesn't have anything in there yet. DOSBox might be interesting to see what we can get running in there. MSX. Pokemon Mini. That'd be cool. Uh, there's two different SNES emulators for some reason. Game & Watch. Game Boy. 
Famicom Disk System. Oh, actually has stuff in. Cool. Or does it? Are these just regular Famicom games by the looks of it? I love Tetris Battle Gaiden, one of my favourite versions. Should we see if they have it on here? You know what else about Tetris Battle Gaiden as well? Alexei Pajitnov said that it's his favourite version of Tetris too, because he likes playing it with his son apparently. Or at least that's that's what I read somewhere a while ago. I'm going to see if it's on here. There's 1,400 different Tetris games. It better be on here. L, M, N. Getting closer. I think when I do my review, though, I'm going to clear all this off and just put my own ROMs on there so I don't get in trouble or anything. I don't want to risk any issues. No Tetris. What? There's all these games on here and no Tetris. What is this list? Tattoo Man. It might be Tattoo Man. Maybe they had to hide it. Definitely no Tetris, right? I'm not being blind, am I? It should be there. There is a search. I saw that earlier. Let's try. Nothing. There is no Tetris. Weird. Yeah, no Tetris. That's a bit sad. Let's see whether this works. I put this on here earlier. The uh, Banjo Pilot tech demo. Ooh, okay. It doesn't like that. Oh my god. Ha! <laughs> Listen. Oh, it's crashed completely. Oh my god. That's not good. One frame a second, Banjo Pilot. Is it because it's got an overlay on and it's causing it trouble? No, it just doesn't like it at all. And it's got kind of a weird weird lines going down the screen as well, which do not appear on the actual GBA. And this version does run fine on the actual GBA, GBA as well. So I don't really know what's going on with that. And just for fun, let's try out the original version. The 2001 demo. What's going on? That one doesn't want to load up at all. Let's try this one. I think this is a 2003 demo. Okay, this one did work. Weird, it's almost like it couldn't see a cartridge even though it doesn't need one. Okay, that's just dead as well. Seems like a very flaky machine. Good, good when it works, but it definitely needs some improvement before I could properly recommend it. But anyway, I think I'm going to end the stream there. I mean, I've had a good three hours or so. 
Let's see what the battery life is like, actually. Does it say? Is there any way of seeing, seeing the battery life? At all? Maybe it's these bars here, but that would be a bit weird. There's no battery indicator at all. Interesting. Yeah, there really isn't. That's very strange. Yeah, definitely needs a bit more time in the oven, but yeah, look forward to my video on it anyway, and hopefully next Friday, if I get enough time to try it all out by then. Anyway, that's it for today, I guess. So thank you, everyone who stopped by to check out the Miu Mini Plus with me. I'm sure you'll agree it's an interesting system. Whether it's good or not, I'm not entirely sure. What's the processor? I'm not sure they've actually said. Shall we have a quick look? I believe it's the same processor that's inside the original. ARM Cortex A7 dual core CPU running at 1.2 gigahertz. Is that good? It's got a 640 by 480 resolution and 128 megabytes of RAM and can use up to 128 gigabytes of micro SD. And it says it has around a four to five hour battery life. So pretty low spec, I guess, but it's also kind of cheap. So I guess it's worth it, especially if you just want to play NES, SNES, some PS1 games. I mean, it's it's a really nice form factor as well. It's really comfortable. And I didn't mention it, but the buttons feel really good, which is great because that's not always the case. So anyway, yes, thank you, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the stream. And tomorrow I'll definitely be testing out some more stuff with it. So thanks all for stopping by. Go ahead and check out my YouTube channel in the meantime. And I'll be working hard on getting this up. Came out in 2011. Wow. Yeah, that's old. Yeah. But, you know, it is what it is. It's a nice it's a nice system. So that's it for this stream anyway. So see you all again soon. Bye.